I've been gone for actually three days. I had plastic surgery, can you tell? Not. So, if you curl this thing way around so that the petals go in, this technique is not going to work because it's going to flat, it's going to fold them in half and flatten them. So you want to leave it so that they're, they're still kind of thinking they want to go out instead of going in. Um, and now we're going to punch down from this side um, and I'm going to put it approximately in the middle. This is the round end. They're both round. And now see how it's changing its shape already. And making a um, more like what I wanted to do with the flower shape. Now the softer the uh, thing that you're hammering on the more um, this is going to move. If I wanted to really punch these petals out a little bit more I could put it on um, this is pretty hard actually it's rock hard pitch and I could come in with smaller than that. Who, whoever works here is getting fired. Maybe that's you Lisa. <laughs> so I can come in with the, the little um, punch and work it in here to make more of a punch out on the pedal, which you can barely tell actually. Um, and if it's too high for you, just give it a whack down like that. Another trick is, well I don't know if it's a trick, I think everything I do is a trick, getting up in the morning. Um, you can twist these pedals and have them overlap one another. This is actually easier if it's annealed because I've been pounding on it. And I just squished that one. But you can, you know, you can reshape the piece at this point. Um, for this, what did I use for gauge? I think this was 24 gauge. But I wouldn't bet my life or anything on it. Hold on, I'll be back. So it was 24 gauge. Um, what was I going to say about that? Well, if you use the thin metal like the 24 gauge, um, this neck te technique is going to be a little more difficult because the metal is very movable. Um, if I'm doing a bracelet or a ring, I like to use 20 gauge. Um, so this would probably be great for an earring or a um, uh, nose ring. <laughs> Or, or a necklace, okay? So stay away from the tiny ones. If you were going to make like a cup with three varying sizes in this to like create a rose, you'd probably be okay doing the 24 gauge or even 26, I suppose. And it all depends on what metal you use. Copper, you know, is real soft and, and uh, brass isn't. So brass 26 gauge would be completely different from copper 26. So shut up, Nancy, and let's move on. This is a checkering file. And this is a medium cut checkering file that I have and it has all these cutting edges that create a very cool pattern that I'm going to show you on the edges because I wanted it to have that serrated edge like we had in that you saw in the original drawing. Um, so I'm going to show you that as soon as I let my cat in. Okay, so the checkering fire ma file makes these groovy things. Groovy! on a Sunday afternoon. Um, you can also turn it on its edge and cut little teeth in it. Ow! Or your finger. Now like I said this copper is rather thin and it's just ha having a field day bending on me so I have to keep pulling it back. If I was using 20 gauge this would be a lot easier. But I wanted to get that kind of raggedy looking edge like it was in the drawing. And this is one of the ways you can do it. It'd probably be a little easier if I had a the um, really rough cut one. Another thing that you can do, excuse me, madam, is use your handy dandy saw, and you can. Um, this will make you crazy, but it, you know it, it's part of the life of a jeweler. Is you can cut little triangles. I finally figured out it's a little easier to support, saw it this way if it's supported and I drew in some um, monster teeth so you can see how I'm cutting. When you do this, keep those fingers out of the way. Make your little uh, sawn edges there. And one of the, another way that this can be done, if you can get your saw out, sorry, 
a big arm in the way. You can also use a triangular file to cut teeth, you cut the same kind of shape in here. I kind of start it at an angle and then go up and do it on the top if you want to cut all the way through. Let's see if you can see it from the back. No, I can even do it from the back. Excuse me. And you can also use your, your square. And this is definitely work to be done with an optimizer or some kind of magnification if you are in the 40 plus set. Ooh, what a sound that is. So um, those are three methods for making that kind of raggedy edge. And and don't forget, use you know your little sanding disc and clean up. So the last thing that um, we need to cover on this is how to attach it to uh, your metal. Um, one of the things I like to do is to run a piece of wire through it and um, add a little stamen in the middle or berry or something like that. Um, so what you need to do, um, especially if you're going to solder it, if you're not going to put the post through and you're just going to solder this flat, you'll need to use like a punch like this. These are from Harbor Freight and they're completely flush on, flat on the bottom and I would just go in and tap it to have one nice absolutely flat spot and then I would also file this really flat for sand if I was going to solder this directly. Now you may notice there's a hole here. We had to reshoot this part but I'm going to talk through this part where we put the, the wire through. So pretend I've done this. I make my divot where I'm going to make my hole. Get my drill out. Drill the hole. <laughs> And um, I made these little nail heads uh, by balling up um, the Ar argentium wire and then uh, flattening them in a um, uh, drill bit thingy. I'll have a link to it. So but what you can do is add these little pieces into it like that and add a little more interest to the flower. Um, and at this point, you know, you might want to curl these leaves up a little more or whatever. Um, so, um, that's, that's basically it on making these flowers and, um, there's a zillion variations on how to do that and, um, I'm going to tell you a little secret in a minute. Oh, you want to hear the secret? Well, we are going to be making a new video, not, not yet, but soon, on flowers all different kinds, different patterns, oh, just stamens, pistols, uh, what's the other thing, leaves, branches, it's going to be fabulous. So, start holding your breath. Anyway, and the other thing I need to talk to you about is something very serious, I'm going to stop goofing off for a second if that's possible. Um, we are a negative profit business, me and little Lisa, and um, we need your support. And the only way at this point that I get any kind of income whatsoever is through that little annoying ad that comes on in the beginning, probably not annoying, it's a fabulous ad, that comes on in the beginning of my videos. And if you watch that all the way through, um, we get a couple of cents to keep us running. Um, the other way is that I am an Amazon affiliate member and anytime you buy anything through my Amazon links, we get a couple of pennies there. So if we get enough pennies, we might have a dollar. And um, the other and last way that you can help support us, well there's probably other ways you can help support us, but the ones that I'm going to talk about today, um, is by purchasing our full length videos. We um, have just finished filming and are in the editing stage of a video on camera, um, cell phone actually, camera photography for small scale objects and jewelry. And I'm going to show you how to make uh, several different kinds of photo boxes. I'm also going to show you how to make your own um, cell phone holder for a tripod. Um, I cover software, how to use basic use on video, on photo editing software. and. Um, how to take pictures, and it's going to be pretty fabulous. I hope. I'm pretty sure it might be. Lisa filmed it, so it's going to be really good. So, anyway, that's it, and 
I tell you what, you come back here, you never know what you're going to find. I love you. I love making these goofy movies for you. And I love you people. You're just fabulous. So come back anytime to my house. I'll be here waiting for you. I will.